exclusive look inside the world of Michael Jackson, the three bodyguards he trusted with his life, speaking out for the first time. Ashley Banfield spent three days with the men who put their lives on the line for the King of Pop. Now, no matter what you think about Jackson, what you hear from these men may change how you feel. And Ashley, again, you, you spent quite a bit of time with these gentlemen. I did, and I gotta be honest, I really expected they were gonna trash mm -hmm, him because mm -hmm. so many people have sure. in the past. It was the opposite, gotta be honest. Um, they do wanna write a book about him, and they say it's because someone has to defend this guy. They wanna call the book in defense of the king. And really, theirs is a story about a man who is sad and lonely, but mostly an amazing father. He was the biggest pop star in the world. And at every frenzied moment, just beyond the camera's range, were three very big bodyguards. Mike Garcia, Bill Whitfield, and Javon Beard. Now, in this exclusive interview, they're revealing new details, intimate and personal, about Michael Jackson, the father, the brother, the prisoner of his fame. There were times that he vented, and he vented loudly. Why don't people just leave me alone? But Michael trusted them with his life, with his kids, and with his secrets. We became more than just security. With personal you know. assistance. And I'll say in the beginning, it was like, this is not our job. But then after a while, when we, once we got to see what the situation and everything was, and how there was nobody else around, there was no entourage or anything else, it was just us. They were on guard 24 seven, traveling with Jackson and his kids across the country. When they weren't on the road, the family called this rented Las Vegas mansion home. The walls stretch right around this compound. It's a veritable fortress. And although you and I might look at this as a, a beautiful Las Vegas oasis, bodyguards said that Michael hated being here. For you and I, it's a great house. Right. But for security for Michael Jackson and his kids, horrible house. They say Jackson felt exposed here. Too many neighbors, paparazzi swarming at the gate, even hiding in the trees. But it was in this house that these men learned more about Michael Jackson than almost anyone else. Was he a good dad? Awesome. Uh, yes, awesome. The kids would constantly tell him, you know, I love you, daddy, right. things like that. So he was like the four buddies, you know? Yeah. I mean, it was, that was their world. And they say he did all he could to shield Prince, Paris, and Blanket from the media frenzy. Did he know the headlines that said Wacko Jacko? Sometimes you've seen him, and you would actually see him take it and turn it around right. so the kids didn't see it. He was successful in shielding those kids from yes. these oh, headlines. absolutely. Sure. Yes. Did he know that the, the reason so many people thought he was bizarre was because of some of his behavior? Everything he did, he didn't find a problem with. Right. He didn't He's think it was weird. Different. I'd use the word different. Mm -hmm. Weird, no. And as for the kids... It's regular kids. But I mean, with the, IQs you know, of, of a 21-year-old. Yeah. Older, certainly. You know. very, very well mannered. Very, very. Very, very polite. Um, polite? Just look at this note from Paris regarding the family cat. Bill, I would very much like it if you could get more canned tuna for Katie. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. Because sometimes, you know, Hollywood celebrity kids aren't particularly uh, polite right. or nice to be they around. I mean, sometimes they will be, they will say little things as far as like, um, um, well, Bill, Daddy wants you to go get some cookies for us. Right. They'll say little kids <laughs> to play, right. knowing that he didn't right. say that. Right. Like, right. oh, yeah, they would do be, little right. stuff like that. Little so kids. All we'll do is just ask the client, would you right. like us to go get some, uh, no. Right. Prince, get up here. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Why are you telling them that? Taking the kids to fast food drive throughs was one of Michael's favorite things to do. And we would go through a drive through and he insisted on ordering himself. Michael you know, Jackson. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll have a Big Mac. As we drove to the window to pay for it, he would just say, if these people only knew who, who ordered just this ordered food. this. Right. <laughs> and we would just laugh. Did we they? sit there and laugh no. like they really don't know. They really no. don't know. They never knew. No, Can not I get at all. a double cheeseburger, please? Not at all. Yeah. Right. Birthdays were extravagant, but very lonely. Cotton candy machine, the popcorn, popcorn machine, machine. Right. the clown that makes the makeup, mm -hmm. and does the balloons. And but how many kids would come? <laughs> no, no. No kids? No, no. Who would be there? Mr. Jackson, his kids, the nanny, school teacher. Us. Us. 
That's about it. Daddy? A portrait of an isolated yet adoring family, one often overshadowed by questions of paternity. When you met the kids, you wonder, but as you got to know the kids, it didn't matter. But perhaps a deeper issue? His relationship with other children. Though he was cleared of molestation charges in 2003, a shadow of speculation remained. Was he a pedophile? No. No, we don't believe so. I don't believe so. Not at all. Being a father myself and being a man, men know men. He had the desires of women like we do. In fact, they say he had at least two girlfriends, dispelling that other rumor. We had a, uh, a curtain in the, that covered the back seat. You couldn't see in the back seat. They talked back there and, you know. So he's making out in the back seat? Or chewing loud gum. It sounds like you're chaperoning two teenagers on a date. It, it, right, like that, yeah. was, that was right. that's cute for us. Right. As for Michael's sometimes bizarre appearance, they say these bandages had nothing to do with secret surgeries. Was he concealing an injury with those bandages? No. That disguise to him was a, the burn victim look. Just it was like a, a disguise? It was a disguise to him. When you saw him coming downstairs getting ready to get in the car with the bandages, what did you think? Something's up with him. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, something's up. Mm -hmm. Did no. you ever tell him? How could you tell him that? Right. Mm -hmm. He's coming down with the kids, so we can't say, like, what the hell you got on, sir? But perhaps the biggest mystery about Michael Jackson is the one he took to his grave, how and why he died. It did appear that a few times that he was on something. Mm -hmm. You know, you could tell his demeanor. It was different than having been around him for so, many, so long. You, it changed. You knew something was not right at the moment. Well, they spent two years with that boss, and I should tell you, they did not ask for anything for this interview. They do want to write that book, though. Tomorrow on GMA, we're going to have a whole lot more. We're going to go into those finances, credit cards being denied, if you can believe it, being evicted from hotels. Not only that, the Stormy Jackson family relationship. Robin, he had to have appointments to see his family. The family members had to have appointments. And also, I want to say that tonight on Nightline, we're going to go into some uh, further detail about this. And are you ready for this? He wanted... What you and I have every day. Which is what? He wanted to go to Walmart. He wanted, according to these bodyguards, to just go up to a bar and order a beer. These were one just of the like things, everybody else. Just what we take for granted. That's what he wanted. What are the stories you're going to take away that you have a better insight now of the, of the, of the Michael that we did not get to see? Well, I sure didn't know this stuff, I'll tell you. Uh -huh. And uh, and I listen, I covered trials for the last five years, so I had an opinion mm -hmm. <laughs> about this guy going in. But this is different. This is new. And we've got some web extras, actually, on ABCnews.com because, man, was there a lot of material that they told me I couldn't wedge into this yeah. piece. Uh, he wanted wanted to um, uh, read constantly. He read the Wall Street Journal, the, Wall, the Rob Report regularly, thousands of books, mostly history, uh, insisted the kids read, the kids loved books, wanted to steal a statue outside Ooh. of a store at one point, that's a funny moment, and didn't recognize a lady of ill repute on the corner when he saw one, uh, had to be told it was prostitute. And, and you admit that you were skeptical going into this. Absolutely, and uh, I was. They're, they're, they're not just what they said, but how they said it, the reaction of the bodyguards. Did you notice they finish each other's sentences? They. They're just a genuine group, and I, I got a good feeling from them, and um, there's so much more coming tomorrow. You really need to tune into this. So tomorrow and tonight on Nightline, we're keeping you busy. Busy girl. All right, Ash, <laughs> thanks so much. Let's thanks. go over to Sam and the weather.